gentlemen, welcome back to the shop. You got questions? I got answers. Flow drilling. What the fuck, over? In real time with no muse kick. The sound of the machine. Although I will very likely need to quiet it down. Yeah! Since we're heating it up, does the steel harden? Look at that. Beauty. No, it does not harden because there is not enough carbon in the mild steel to harden. We couldn't harden this if we wanted to. It seems to get a little bit tougher. It doesn't chew right off on that edge, so it might get slightly harder, but nothing appreciable. How many ripples is the tool spinning a thing in at? And how much down pressure, as many as she'll suffer, and as much as she'll suffer, but roughly 500 pounds down pressure on the on the quill, and we are about to find out on the ripums. After the catastrophic brittle failure of the 3 8 flow drill, is there a lubricant you can use in order to prevent it from welding itself into the steel? Yes, there is. They sell it, and it's mainly, according to the MSDS, or nowadays, of course, they have to change everything all the time. It's now the MDS, Material Data Sheet, not the Material Safety Data Sheet. I mean, committees need something to do, am I right? It's mainly consisting of zinc stearate, so a metal atom or a metal core with fatty acids all over the place, big organic uh, chemistry kind of salt molecule. And I, I went and looked at the, uh, basically it's a big clusterfuck of fatty acids with a core of zinc oxide. So for lubricant, we are going to use diaper ash cream. And it's, you get a fatty acid. You put it at a uh, thousand dungarees centigrade. Guess what? The fatty acid disappears. The core of zinc oxide stays. But of course, they couldn't sell you diaper ash cream because it wouldn't make any fucking money. Now, zinc, <laughs> zinc, uh, the sterates, ste sterates are used in mold making. And they're a mold release. Um, according to Wikipedia, magicians use it for uh, fanning their, their tricks so that their, their cards don't stick together. It's essentially, it's a, it's a powder that allows, it's, it's a lubricant. Just, you could probably use graphite on this. And this is a case where a little dabble do ya, big gobble screw ya. Doesn't really seem to do too much on the small quarter inch hole, but we're gonna move up to the half inch hole. Another question, why am I peck drilling with the larger size, allowing it to cool off? I I had thought this was painfully obvious, but Dunning-Kruger and so forth, I will show you why I'm peck drilling. Confucius say, if no power in your pecker, have you procure blue pill for your proboscis? Our darling clapped out Bridgeport milling machine has no recourse to little blue pills. 
It doesn't have enough power. It doesn't have the torque to power through that at the speed that we need. So, peck, peck, peck in the pecker is the only way to keep it from torquing out. Is it possible to friction drill by hand? I don't know. We're going to find out. We're going to have to go full Canadian in order to uh, even remotely have a new leak. Fuck. Our bad case of the Weeble Wobbles. This is turning at 2100 ripums. 200 pounds roughly of down pressure contact. No way, can't be done. Problem is you just can't get enough down pressure in order to create enough heat to get it to go. Now you look at the hole there, that is a beautiful surface finish. What if we wanted to use that as a bushing surface, a bearing surface for a slider or something? Is there any way to harden this bushing? Well, to harden it we need to add carbon. So I wonder if we use graphite or straight up carbon as a lubricant lubricant if it will harden we're going to try that out now for making a hardened hold as i said before the mild steel doesn't have enough carbon in it to harden so we're going to have to add carbon what we have is some pyrolyzed bread pure <laughs> all killer no filler And of course, well, I have to do this because people don't take my word for it. But anyway, this is going to fly all over the fucking place. We'll make a little divot and then we'll fill it full and then we'll, we'll go through and see if it hardens. The reason I'm using pyrolyzed bread and not crappy charcoal briquettes is that uh, those charcoal briquettes you buy actually have anthracite coal in them. That's why they, when you first start them up and they smell like oil, it's because there's actual coal in there and there's so much filler. I did a video about that. So yeah, can't use that shit for anything other than, I guess guys like it because it burns slower, but as far as a source for carbon, it's terrible. Now let's see if that's any harder than the rest. Here's a regular hole, a nice sharp file. Bites right in. Here's the half inch. Bites right in. Here's the carburized hole or the case hardened carbon hole. No. Soft, soft, soft. And you know, it's one thing to think about it and know it's not going to work. It's another thing to try it and see that it doesn't work. It doesn't work because there's not enough soak time. It takes a long time for carbon to dissolve into the steel, enough carbon to dissolve into the steel to allow it to be hardened. Like if you put it in a heat treat oven, it takes hours. You let it soak for hours in order to get, you know, a few mils, a few thou of case hardening on a mild steel part or even slightly higher carbon steel part. So it makes sense that you could actually use graphite as a lubricant and you wouldn't have any trouble at all. We're going to check to see how much stronger the threads in the flow drilled hole are compared to the regular cross section. Now I did buy some forming taps, which are special taps. They make very strong holes because they don't mechanically cut any chips out. You're not losing any material, you're just displacing it. Unfortunately, I bought a, a quarter inch and uh, from the Big Rock Candy Mountain, Maoist Poundland, and this is what they sent me. Unfortunately, quarter inch bolt, uh, 20 threads per inch, is slightly different than quarter inch pipe thread. Ever so slightly different. And after we've threaded them, 
Guys wanted me to make a jig and get out little screwy and do a pull test uh, or a push test would be easier with hydraulics and see how much force and so forth. For fuck's sakes, think about it. You already have a fastener which is a wedge on an inclined plane. You're wedging in there. All we're going to do is we're going to check to see the torque at which it pulls out. Because it's the same thing as actually pulling it out. So <laughs> we don't need to make a jig or anything. All we need is a few little spacers and a torque wrench. That's it. Hold my beer while I break this tap. Okay. Refer to the insert that came with your ruler. It's a quarter inch uh, grade 8 fastener, 20 threads per inch. That means at uh, something like wet, 110, 108 is the number, 108 inch pounds, of course, um, you will get 2,800 pounds of clamping. 28, so this little bastard will put out almost a ton and a half. Well, no, a little over a ton, a little over a ton. And you get that from tw uh, one to uh, like six or eight foot pounds. Six or eight foot pounds. Fuck. The mind boggles. Unfortunately, we're going to be about as scientitious as a high school science project on account of I only have this half inch torque wrench and the lowest it goes is 30. And of course, because it's a spring, it's not linear on the bottom end of the scale. Yeah, and so forth. But as far as comparison, hopefully we will be able to comparison. Comparize something okay so I'm gonna pull it 30 foot pounds and see if it pulls out if it pulls out we're hooped because I got nothing I got nothing yeah well that was that science white lab coats numbers really heals ya really don't care there we have two threads, there we have six threads, discount the last one because it's in sort of flaky material. Five threads versus two threads. I mean, nine out of ten doctors on TV know you can prove anything with statistics. Almost stripped right, oh no, tighten it up. Might need to get a bigger wrench. I oh, know. No, no such luck. Fucking dickered. Yeah, that's completely dickered. She ain't coming out. Just spin them and make it free in there. This guy. Well, look, it's gonna come right out. Couple of magic curse words, old Indian trick. Just spinning right free. Maybe not. There we go. It's coming up. That's too bad. I wanted to show you what you do with old busted breaker bars. Grind them down and turn them into prying bars. If and you got a fastener that won't come out, just try the back side and give it a little pressure and she'll come right out. And the difference is very telling. This hole actually broke the fastener, pulled right apart. This one just stripped those two little threads right out. You can see remnants of it sitting here waiting to cut you from stem to stern. So that's the difference. Guys were wondering about the thermal imagery on account of it being only 200 dungarees well, science hot, but obviously not a thousand degrees, which the metal actually was. The range on this isn't that high. One. Two, it was far away. And this is not an accurate tool for sp specific measurements. It's more a good troubleshooting tool for seeing kind of what the hot spots are, not determining how hot the hot spot is, if you get what I'm saying. So you got to take these kind of measurements with a grain of salt. More of a show and tell. You can see what was getting hot, what was still cool. So what's left? Not much. Just the gratuitous use of red hot tools poking through steel. What for increasing our clickbait chooch factor. Those poor freebooters on Facebook, they, they need some kind of whack off fodder. If nothing else, that's a cool look for speed holes. Thanks for watching. 
Keep your dick in a vice.